All right, we're now being joined by the head coach of the Florida Gulf Coast, Joe Dooley, as well as a couple student athletes from FGCU. Uh, coach, you can start with an opening statement if you like. Well, I thought that our, our defense to begin with, we didn't give up easy baskets, and I thought that Mark and uh, Meach did a great job of changing some shots at the basket, and after that we were able to get out, and Mark and Christian, those guys, got us a good start offensively, played with some confidence, even though we didn't necessarily shoot the ball well, especially in the first half from the free throw line, but and we didn't let it affect our defense, and, and we're proud of our guys for the effort tonight. All right, we'll open the floor for questions for Mark Eddy and Christian only at this point. Here in the front on the right. <clears throat> Dana Caldwell, Naples Daily News. Mark Eddy, uh, obviously you guys had a height advantage going into tonight. Uh, clearly the game plan was to attack them early inside, early and often inside, and just kind of if you would talk to me about how you guys were able to do that tonight. Um, we just made sure we stuck to what we've been doing all year because that's what got us here. So um, coach, was, coach made the game plan and said we're going to do what we've been doing, and we did it, and it worked for us. Yep, here on the left on the aisle. Both you guys, how do you feel? Mark, can you answer that first, please? So a great first um, NCAA tournament win, so it feels great. Christian? We're very blessed to be here, and uh, we're excited for our next game, and um, we're just gonna looking to play hard and um, be ready for that game. Follow up right here on the aisle. When they came at you guys in the second half, did, did you get nervous at some point? Christian? Uh, we knew they were going to make a run, and um, we just tried to withstand that, and I think we did a pretty good job of uh, handling their run. Here on the right on the aisle. At the beginning, the ball movement looked like crisp, clean, uh, pretty decisive. How are the nerves like going in in the first few minutes of the game? Mark Eddy? Um, it was good. The guys were very focused and um, and we talked about it. We said, look, we know we know that in a, by the time the game starts, you'll be a little bit uptight, but just as soon as the ball go up, you'll be good. Just keep playing and make sure you have fun. Tim, you're on the left. Yeah, Mark Eddy, especially Morant, uh, you know, that the alley-oop at the very beginning, what kind of tone does that set for everybody? Does it kind of send a message? Um, yes, it does, and um, Coach drew up the play, and uh, we just executed it just as he drew it. Here in the front again on the aisle. Uh, both you guys uh, don't want to get into North Carolina very much. We'll see you tomorrow. But I do want to ask you, uh, you know, a number, number 16 has never beaten a number one. Uh, do you take any solace at all in the fact that FGCU is a 15, is the only program to ever beat a number two and got, or to go to the Sweet 16? Did, did, are you guys bolstered by that at all? And, and how do you feel going as a 16 against the number one on Thursday? Mark Eddy. Uh, we're just, we just going to stay confident and believe in ourselves and give the, our best effort. Anything can happen. And as long as we do what Coach says, I'm pretty sure we can make it happen if it's possible. Christian? Um, we're just going to continue to play our style of play and um, just look to play the right way. And um, hopefully, we'll come out with a win. Laura? Can you just talk a little bit about that turnaround? To, uh, I assume you guys are heading out there pretty quick tonight and then practice tomorrow, play Thursday. Christian? Um, it's a little bit different. We haven't been doing that a lot recently. Or, and um, it's a fast turnaround, but we're going to be ready. Mark Eddy? Um, Coach already have a game plan for us, which is going to follow it. I'm pretty sure we believe in them and we trust in them. It'll work. Tim, on the left. Yeah, Mark Eddie and Christian, how would you describe y'all y'all style if someone has never seen you play before? It looks like energy is is the basis of it. Mark. Yeah, um, I'm one of the energy guys on the floor. I just make sure we're vocal, active at all time, and just the energy I always find the ball. That's what Coach tell us in practice, and it seems to work for us all season. So we're gonna stick to it. Christian. Yeah, like Mark said, our energy is our main thing. We we. Um, try to have as much energy on defense as possible. And um, I'd say our identity is defense. Our defense is uh, what makes us go. Any further questions for our student athletes here on the aisle? Just the degree of how dominant you guys were in that first 20 minutes. I mean, good game plan and all that stuff and energy and all the things you have going for you. But did you guys expect it to be that severe in your favor that early that, or that, that, that much? Christian. Um, well, no, we can't really ever expect that. You've got to come into the game thinking it's going to be a um, competitive game right at the beginning. But, um, yeah, we just stayed focused no matter what the score was, and we were ready to play today. Um, we just kept playing defense because 
that's the only reason that's the only reason the um the score was the way it was in the beginning of the game because we were playing defense, we were getting stops and we were able to get some basket on the other end. We got time for two more. Tim on the left. I'll jump ahead. What do you know about North Carolina, Mark Eddie? What 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 impresses you about North Carolina? What you've seen on them, seen of them this year? Um, I've watched them all season actually because they're always on TV and um, their style of play is pretty fast and they want to get up and down the floor and just fly around and use their limbs to their advantage. We have time for one more question. Last one here on the aisle. How much did you guys play against Joel Perry in high school? Yeah, I played against him one game, and um, he was a great player. He dominated the whole game, and um, yeah, he was a, he was a great player. He still is. Yeah, um, so same thing. I played with him. I think it was Kingdom of the Suns, and they actually ended up beating us by one point, and he played pretty well. All right, Christian and Mark Getty, thank you for your time. Good luck in the first round against North Carolina. All right, thanks. Questions for Coach Dooley here in the front. Joe, it seemed like almost a, a, almost a perfect scenario for you guys tonight, really. You were able to build a good lead with your bigs. Your guards played, I thought, pretty well in the second half. You uh, were able to go up against the zone and, and fared nicely against the zone. Uh, you were able to give some guys some minutes and some guys some rest. What, what are your overall thoughts on how this went and how that will impact uh, Thursday? Well, it, it obviously gives them some confidence. I don't think it has any impact on Thursday. But, you know, I thought the guys did a nice job on a quick turnaround of paying attention. We, we had a few slip-ups like you're always going to have. but. Uh, I thought Mark and, and Meech protected the basket. I thought we didn't give up a ton of easy ones. And let's, so let's cut the chase. They missed a few chippies, too. I mean, I, I, I think both teams were a little jittery early. You could see it in our free throw shooting. But uh, we just sort of kept plugging away, plugging away. And I thought but our guys did a good job of using our depth. You're in the aisle on the right. After failing to break the press two times in a row, you called a timeout. What did you tell the guys, you know, because eventually you guys were able to break the press and it seemed with ease? Well, all of a sudden we forgot what got us there. We went from uh, having a middleman and the sideline, all of a sudden you dribble up the side and someone forgets to cut, or we pick up a dribble, we threw a couple of sloppy passes, and uh, I, you know, we, we, and then the other thing was we weren't being aggressive once we did break the press. We said, don't settle, let's go ahead and drive it downhill if we can and, and uh, be aggressive. And I thought, you know, once we did it a little bit later, we were much better, but don't be complacent. Here in the front, on the right. Laurel Failer from for the Naples Daily News. Um, was that about as efficient as, as you've seen Meech and Mark Eddy? Well, they've, you know, the big thing is Mark Eddy's had an unbelievable year, and Meech, when we've had him, has had a really good year. We're a different team with him, and, you know, the sad thing for him is he hasn't even been able to practice, you know, virtually at all. And, I, you know, he's improved so much, and I think he's so much got, uh, got so much more of a ceiling. So that's good news because we'll have both those guys back next year. But I, I thought those guys did a nice job playing. Uh, you know, Meech is a presence around the basket, so you have to watch it when you when you drive it. And I thought Mark Eddy was very efficiently, obviously. Obviously, you're on the left. Texas A&M, Florida, big teams. Not have, didn't have the same level of success that North Carolina had, but playing those games, big schools, big teams. What does that do to prepare your guys for this game? Well, I mean, different style. I mean, in Florida, you know, was such a pressing transition team, so it's one thing and. Uh, Texas A&M was a sort of wind up and grind you out type team and they could really throw the ball in the post and, and punish you that way and they're so they're so effective defensively they're just very solid don't make mistakes uh, you know we, we, we've played in some big arenas we played some teams but uh, you know it'd be a whole different animal on on uh, Thursday you're in front Laurel you mentioned the free throw shooting um, was that something you addressed at halftime a little bit better in the second or a lot better in the second half <laughs> A lot better in the second half. We, we, we dressed it a couple of timeouts in the first half, and it didn't work. I don't know what happened at halftime, but it's like everything else. I mean, you, sometimes you start the game, and guys are missing free throws, and sort of everybody does it. And then next thing you know, guys start making free throws, and everybody starts making it. And Christian, I, Christian and Trey, I thought, really got us off to a start when the second half, when guys started seeing the ball go through the basket, especially when they had made a little run to start the half. And I thought that sort of got our confidence back a little bit. Here in the back on the left. Uh, Madison Hampton with Eagle News, the FGCU paper. Um, back in 2013, you were over with Kansas. So this is your first time in the NCAA tournament with FGCU. What is that like? Well, I mean, it's great. We had we had some fans, you know, the fans traveled with us, and 
um, excitement. You know, it was a quick, it was especially hard for our fans because of the quick turnaround. You know, you can't you know find that out at eight o'clock at night where you're going the next morning. And I, it was great. The band, the people behind the bench were terrific. And uh, also, as people said, the atmosphere in Dayton was terrific. I mean, the people here were unbelievably basketball crazy, and I, it's a great venue, great, great basketball venue. Here in the front, on the right. Joe, you mentioned confidence, that this was very important for that. Clearly, confidence is uh, you know, going to be a huge deal going into play Carolina in, in Raleigh. Uh, how much confidence do these guys, do you feel, have right now? You know, this is now, uh, what, uh, eight out of ten, uh, five or six in a row? Well, the young guys, I mean, that's been the thing we've fought at times. You know, they start looking around. I mean, they're getting older. They're starting to figure out they've got minutes. You know, they, they've played minutes, and now, you know, I think they believe in themselves, and they believe that, you know, if we play the right way and we try to do some of the things we're supposed to and we take care of the ball and we guard it, that we, we could be a pretty good basketball team. Here on the aisle on the left. <clears throat> the TV guys were giving you hell. They had a close-up of your forehead with all the sweat. Real close-up. Beads everywhere. When you guys were up, big. What's up with that? I had nothing. It, I sweat walking down the street, and that's even worse in Florida. Uh, so, I mean, it was toasty in there, and... The other option was to take off my sport coat, but then they would have seen how sweaty I really was because my sweat through the shirt too. So I mean, we, you know, it was it was toasty, and it was toasty in the locker room too. We have time for one more question. Last one here in the front. George Willis, New York Post. Uh, what does it mean to you personally to uh, get your team to this point and win this game after all the years you've been in coaching? I think I'm, you know, I can't believe how fortunate. I mean, Dr. Bradshaw and Ken gave me an opportunity to run the program and, and keep this thing rolling. And, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate. I've played, I've coached in every round of the NCAA tournament from the first four to a final, to final fours. And, uh, you know, I talked to our guys about how hard it is to get here. It's, it's hard. I mean, there's 68 of us. And there's a lot of people that are, have really good teams that aren't playing. And I told the guys to be appreciative of, of playing in this deal. I mean, not everybody gets to do it and enjoy it, embrace the opportunity. And, you know what, it's a pretty cool deal. All right, Joe, thank you for your time. Good luck in the first round against North Carolina.